you are here and I am ready with the word of God. Good evening, everybody. Let someone know another fired up about our faith Bible study is about to begin. And we're going to start an exciting study tonight. Well, I want to say exciting, but a, a study that came about because of the reality of the times that we are in right now. I had a young lady come to me the other day. You know, I used to be a chaplain in the hospital where we would go and visit. And, you know, because of COVID, you have not been to several funerals during this time, just like some of you. Here is the kicker. A young lady found herself crying uncontrollably, uh, not wanting to eat, not wanting to get out of bed, just down and discouraged because when her mother died, she never got a chance to see her mother's body, to have those last precious moments. You know, the conversations we could have before this virus where we could talk to people. And that triggered this long-term, that's been months ago, and it triggered this long-term discouragement. So I want to start tonight with this story that I think it's a, it's a illustration that I think will go to bring us closer to the subject we're going to be dealing with. The story goes that the devil was having a going out of business sale. We only wish. And as he was doing so, the day of the sale came and anyone who wished to buy any of his tools that he used could step up and buy the devil's tools. Well, the day of the big sale came and he had all of his tools laid out on display. He had hatred and malice and jealousy and sensuality and idolatry and anger and pride and lies. They were all laid out and all of them had their own price. But then there was one tool in the back, well-worn, uh, kind of a wedge tool. And everyone asked, and it was priced higher than the rest of the other tools. And everyone asked the devil, what is that? And the devil said, that is discouragement. Quick question came quickly. Well, why is it priced so high? He said, because that is the tool that I can use on anybody that always works. He says, I can wedge this tool into a man's heart. And once I get into a man or woman's heart, then basically I can make them do whatever I want or use them any way I want. And it has never failed. He said, this tool of discouragement will work when the other tools won't. So they said, well, are you, why are you selling it? He said, well, the price is high if you want to buy it. Well, the story goes that no one could afford to buy that tool and the legend says it still belongs to the devil today and he uses it against God's people. That's what we're going to be talking about. Depression, discouragement. I want to talk about a battle that we're going through. How do you battle the spirits of discouragement and depression? This is a real battle. I don't care how tough you are. I don't care if you tell me, you know, I, I know a lot of scripture. I've been saved a long time. It does not stop the enemy from coming to bring discouragement against your soul. And now is even a more opportune time because of what's going on in our world. I actually ran into a study. We're going to be talking about spiritual depression. And of course, I start out with, have you ever been discouraged or depressed and I really probably didn't even need the screen because it says if you're human I know you have been I'm going to help you through these next few weeks as we talk about how God eliminates this discouragement and depression out of our life through the word of God but let's look at it because what brought this to my attention was there was a, a study done in the U.S. News Report it was a survey of young Americans. And they were surveying Americans who had been, and the, and the title said, many young Americans lonely depressed during the pandemic. And there was a survey given. Over a thousand people, age 18 to 35, 
uh, took part on an online anonymous questionnaire from April to May. A thousand young people, 18 to 35. Now I want you to hear this. Nearly half reported high levels of loneliness. Uh, you know, with all their technological gadgets and all they could do on the internet, they were still lonely for human company. Um, eight in 10 had significant depressive symptoms. This is important, watch this. And more than 60% said they had moderate or severe anxiety. We all know what it have, means to have an anxiety attack. We all know what it means to be depressed. We all know what it means to be down, but this pandemic, this is a time you need to be prepared for one of the greatest battles you may ever have to fight. I'm gonna tell you a personal story a little later in this, uh, you know, in this study, but many of you out there today, the devil is trying to isolate you. He's trying to deceive you. He's trying to make you feel like it's hopeless. He's trying to make you in this lockdown time feel like God does not have power, but there's many of us out there that can attest. There's a whole lot of days I feel crazy. I know that's not a technological word anymore. It's not a, you know, educational terminology. But there's times that I felt like I was going, I was losing it. Uh, I felt like I was in a position where I didn't know what to do next. Anybody ever been there? And all of that is part of this human battle to battle through depression. So my brothers and sisters, as we get started, I want to encourage you, first of all, get ready to fight your battle. I'm going to give you some weapons. I'm going to equip you for it. But I want you to understand it so the devil doesn't trick you the next time you or I find ourselves discouraged by what's going on in our life. I know there's somebody out there discouraged listening to me now. How do we deal with it? Discouragement is an inevitable part of life and ministry. There are many reasons and symptoms accompany someone who is depressed or discouraged. So if I say that it's inevitable, it means God's not shocked or surprised by your discouragement, by my discouragement. So if God says it's something that's going to happen to us, he's already prepared a way for us to get through it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody just reg that just registered in somebody's spirit right now. He's made a way for you to get through it because it's not a surprise or a shock to God. Oh, by the way, the, the young lady I opened up with, she was a Christian. So I want to get into Christians and depression. Now, what I did, there was a survey taken not during the pandemic, but I want to show you a survey of Christian pastors and leaders even before this pandemic, they were having, we were seeing that Christians have a lot of mental health issues they have to get through. First of all, our surveys indicate that 80% of pastors and 84% of their spouses are discouraged or are dealing with depression. Uh, we're going to find out that our jobs, who we are, sometimes exhausting spirituality, you know, our spiritual positions can put us in a place where the enemy wreaks overtime havoc on us. Some of you out there, the devil is trying to take advantage of this pandemic to make sure that you don't stay strong. I'm telling you the word of God is stronger than any darkness that can come in your life. The word of God is able to get you through. You made it through on the word of God before and you can do it now. But here is what I don't want you to do. Don't be ignorant of it. Don't sit there like other folks say, and it's all in my head. And all I got to do is turn it over to God. Yes, but you have to understand or you have to know when this comes on you, don't get shocked and act like, oh, I'm a Christian, this is not supposed to happen. All of us have to battle. Can I get a witness? Discouragement or depression. We all have battled it. You may look at us and say, they look so strong. That's because they're battling to get there. You never know what's going through their mind. But look what happened. The survey, it was, this was a Barner survey. It says 80% of pastors, 84% of their spouses, this is when the church was going full swing. Uh, also, more than 40% of pastors, 47% of their spouses report they are suffering from burnout or frantic schedules and unrealistic expectations. I'm going to leave that up for a minute. Because I will tell you, talk to any pastor, 
talk to any Christian leader that's working now without the benefit of fellowship. I'm working harder now than I did when, there, when we were going full swing, when the building was open. Uh, we estimate that approximately, watch this, 15,000 pastors leave their assignment each month due to moral failure, spiritual burnout, or contention within their local congregations. I'm not focusing on why, but I'm telling you that the enemy comes against us in the area of our mental health. Gets discouraged, get depressed because of the things we allow in ourselves. 25% of all pastors don't know where to go for help. They have a personal or family conflict or a concern. 80, I mean, 33% have no established means of resolving conflict. So we have Christian leaders. This, this doesn't have to just be pastors. This can be any Christian leaders. I'm moving through this rapidly so I can get to you to understand. I want you to know that it happens to everybody. That we can't have a stigma. That you can't sit home and be depressed and just burn out and go into other areas of your life. You know, if you stay in a depressed state long enough, it will bring on other physical and mental problems. So you got to admit, I need some help. And I'm going to tell you, the help or the one source we know will work is the word of God. But there's many levels of help. And Christians don't wait till it's too late before we get some help. At any given time, 75% of pastors in America want to quit. I'm not even going to say anything about that. But there are many times when we know we're doing this work for God. It happens. So I want you to know this as we go forward in this lesson. Depression is a psychological disorder that affects a person's thoughts, moods, feelings, behavior, and physical health. Tune in with me for a minute. Your thoughts. God can help you control them. Your moods. You know how to battle through your moods, your feelings, your behavior, and your physical health. This is something that's like a well-kept secret. We all sit around, hallelujah. And now since you can't have fellowship with folk, you need to understand the reality of how many of the saints in the Bible had to fight through this spirit of depression. People used to think it was all in your head and that if you really tried, you could pull yourself out of it. That's pride. Pride will make you say, nothing's wrong with me. I can handle this. And the whole time you're not sleeping at night. You got thoughts going in and out of your mind that are draining you. You are creating physical problems in your body. God told me to, tell, to help somebody tonight to understand this is not an enemy that God cannot defeat. This is not some foreign body that came on us. God is able to help us through this, but you got to acknowledge you need some help. And when you acknowledge you need some help, the word of God can bring us back to a place of God's joy, but we also have to know how to get help for our condition. The symptoms of depression include, see if you feel like fitting in these, Hopelessness, uncontrolled emotions, changes in weight and appetite, irritability, anger, anxiety, fatigue, and sleep problems. Let's talk for a minute. So, how can a Christian get up in the middle of the night, go to a kitchen drawer, grab a knife, put it to their head because they hear or they've gotten to the point that whatever the enemy has done has gotten through and, and, and something, something, something is saying, kill yourself. It's not worth it. As soon as you hear that, you ought to know that you stepped into a realm that you need to deal with seriously. And because mental health issues could be a chemical problem, whatever the problem is, here's the bottom line. I'm gonna get into all that, but here's the bottom line. No matter how far down we go, it is the word of God that can bring us back. Let me, let me share with you what I'm talking about. The Bible has a lot to say about discouragement and depression. Um, I wanna read Psalms 42. Just a couple of verses. Go with me to Psalms 42. This is David in Psalms 42. It 
And he says in verse 5, and you got to know the background of the song. He was discouraged about not being with God or not being at a place where he had heard from God. There were other folks, you know, who were actually saying, where is your God? And then he had memories of how he used to be. You know, we all got these memories of what used to be. And then if you look at Psalms, don't be afraid. Look at it. Here's what he said. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? He had to talk to himself. I recommend it. Why am I letting myself get down so low? Why are you sitting there watching me now, but you've been depressed in your house for weeks or months? Why are you sitting there with the word of God, watching church, reading scripture, and still not dealing with the discouragement or the darkness that seems to be trying to steal your life. Why do you let the enemy even have a space in you? David answered himself in that same verse. He said, hope thou in God. Man, that's a sermon. Hope thou in God. The first place I got to start is put my feet back on some hope to know it's not hopeless. God can bring back everything I lost. God can bring back everything that's going on. God can turn it around. My hope, I'm never hopeless as long as I have God. He said, hope thou in God, for I will yet praise him for his help, for the help of his presence or countenance. Here's what David said in a nutshell. When I am hopeless, when I am discouraged, when I get depressed, and it can happen to me or any saint, I got to speak to myself, snap out of it, and put your hope back in God. God didn't bring you this far to leave you now. God didn't leave you out here so you could drift off somewhere mentally hurt because he has enough power to get us out. All we have to do is face it by prayer, by praise. He said, I'm going to yet praise my God. So listen to me. The Bible tells us the word depression, transliterated word of depression, is only used one time in the Bible. But the Bible is full of other words that describe the modern symptoms of clinical depression. So I need you to hear this. I'm not a psychologist. But God is saying, many of my saints that I used in scripture, many of those who were victorious, while they were getting their victory, they also had to battle discouragement. They had to battle depression. They had to keep lifting themselves up. Somebody I'm talking to, the joy of the Lord is still yours if you will battle and never give up. No matter how bad it gets. Now watch. Discouraged. Here are the words the Bible used. David just said a minute ago, cast down, in despair, broken hearted, troubled, I'm mourning. My life is spent in those words. How do I maintain a level of survival? Because remember, the Christian life was not just about survival. God gave us a life to thrive. Somebody said that word, thrive. God never wanted me just to survive. He wanted me to face my fears, face my struggles, battle through my issues so that when I get up in the morning, I still have my hope in him. Proverbs 12, 25 tells us, and here's the verse, the one verse that's transliterated to show that that, that is actually the word depression. The other words show the symptoms of depression, the other biblical scriptures, but it says, Anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Two things. Anxiety, anxiousness, um, not having my faith focused on God bring anxiousness. So somebody knows this happened, you know, when you're a novice. It seems like the more you try to fight off anxiousness, the more anxious you get. Ever been there? Uh, the more you, you know, try to calm yourself down, the more anxious you get. You got to get to the point where the psalmist said, I mean, in Proverbs, where he said, a good word makes it glad. You got to get the anxiety out of your heart. That's what I'm talking about tonight. 
You, you got to get the anxiety out of your heart and know that the word of God, a good word from God can turn it around. Everybody I'm telling you about in scripture, when they were bogged down, and you, I, I know I may have some psychiatrists and psychologists and, and, you know, pseudo people. All you're telling me is good. But the most powerful thing in the world is the word of God. And you got to know that that word can get us out. There are many biblical characters who experience and display symptoms of being in a depressed condition. Here's what somebody said. Well, as long as I'm saved, I, I don't claim that. I declare and decree my sanity. All that's good. But don't say it out of ignorance. Face first what's going on. Yes, your poor little body that God picked up out the gutter, put back together again, you can go through some struggles that will rob you of your peace, your joy, your sanity, and it will fill your life with anxiousness, even if you're saved, if you're not ready to battle through it. Somebody say, battle through it. I, I got to say it again. Battle through it. My brother, it's on you. Battle through it. My sister, it's on you. Battle through it. You need to know you're in good company. All of us have moments we have to battle through those periods. Now, I got to go back because I want you to see this. There are many biblical characters. Some say that prolonged discouragement can lead to clinical depression. Uh, I read that in my study that if you allow yourself to stay in this discouraged state long enough, it will lead you to a place of uh, clinical depression, which then involves the physiological along with the psychological symptoms. And here you are trying to fight them off. But by that point, you may need some medication or a doctor to help you. Yup, you heard it here. Don't ever try to separate God from a good therapist or some good medication or, you know, that's something. And if you take it in the realm of helping yourself, you can get off of the medication as the word of God heals you again. But don't be afraid. Sit there and die. Sit there and get physical problems when you can go and get some help. And here's what I, I say about that. So, you know, this may be true. But that's not the focus of this study. The goal of this study is to prove that the word of God has the power to deliver us from the spirit of depression, even if it comes from prolonged discouragement. God can deliver us from all of it if it comes, no matter where it comes from. Look at the, look at the people you're in good company with. David, Hannah, Moses, Jonah, Solomon, Saul. Elijah, Abel, the demonic of the dead. I could name you many, many, many saints of God. Peter, they had to battle. I, I don't have Judas up there. They had to battle these spirits. Judas lost his battle. Saul lost his battle. But all of us have to battle through with the weapons God has given us. And I'm, I'm doing this now also because, you know, when Christmas comes down, some people have, think about the number of deaths, record number of deaths we've had. Pandemic numbers going up. People not being able to go to funerals, go to hospitals, being around their family. We had a Thanksgiving, our first Thanksgiving, where we had five people in the house, where we used to have 31 people in the house. And, you know, you're zooming. It's not the same, but you have to battle through this time of depression. You can't let it eat at your soul. Let me give you some examples of some biblical characters who had to fight through in Genesis 4 and 5, Cain murdered his brother after his offering was rejected. Cain became discouraged and so depressed that he committed the first murder. Rejection. Many of us know the spirit of rejection can lead you to a place that you can't handle what's going on in your life. But don't be the kind of person that allows that rejection to dominate your thinking. 1 Samuel 16, 14, 15. Saul had fits when the evil spirit came upon him and the music was played to calm him. The Bible actually literally tells us, and we're going to look at this when we go into causes. The Bible tells us that Saul, it says, when Saul disobeyed God, so disobedience was the, disobedience was his was the turning point, was the shocker that sent him into discouragement. It said that God's spirit left Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord came on Saul. 
What the Bible's talking about is Saul knew what God said to do. He rejected it and thought there were no consequences. But out of many of the causes of discouragement and rejection, you've seen a lot of God's prophets who were depressed because they didn't do what God said do for their own internal reasons and disobedience of God long enough, even though you think you're getting away with it, can send you to a place where you're depressed. Being in harmony with God means sometimes I got to remember I can't disobey God and think that my mind's going to stay clear. There are consequences. There's uh, reciprocity. There, there is stuff that is coming back on me because of what I did. And discouragement and depression, although it may attack us for many reasons, one even being hereditary, sometimes we bring it on ourselves. Saul disobeyed God, but it has to go back to his personality and, and you know what he felt, the jealousy, the envy we see later in his, in his spirit. In Ecclesiastes, the wisest man in the world Write this text down, Ecclesiastes 1, 14, 7. So you can help yourself out, tell yourself, Solomon was the wisest man in the world, but even he found himself battling depression. He tried to cover it up and battle it with his riches, with his money, with his women, all those things. And finally he had to admit all of that was vanity. There's nothing new under the sun. I better get back to serving God. The preacher declares his spirit, here's the word he used, had been vexed. How, how, how do you get vexed with a pot full of money? How do, how do you get vexed when, when you got a big house mm, and a big car? And how do you get vexed when laying next to you is the woman or man of your dream? Because all of us have a battle to fight that's personal. I'm trying to help you come to grips with something that when it attacks you, you're gonna make your mind up that's not the state God declares for me to be in, and I'm going to fight through it. That's all battling means. I want you to battle discouragement. I want you to battle depression until, I don't care if God battle every day, until you can stand up and say, I'm walking in the joy of the Lord. In Psalm, the psalmist declared, we talked about that. David, his soul was cast down. Mark, the mental illness displayed by the demonic, the demon-possessed uh, man. You know, we're going, to, we're going to get to the spiritual part of that, but we are tripart beings, spirit, soul, and body. So we have to understand why a lot of this battle is spiritual, but it will manifest in the physical and the mental, because the mental realm is really that spirit realm. Those thoughts, thoughts and words are strong capsules of power. If I say praise the Lord, something happens in the atmosphere when I say praise the Lord, you feel it and I feel it. All we're doing is in the spiritual realm, we are releasing an anointing of God. If you walk through your house going praise the Lord and God is good, even though the enemy may be trying to perpetrate your mind, your, your thought life or your power is coming from the word of God that is producing a joy in you that would not come if you didn't say the word. That's why when we enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise, just reading that psalm, you picture spirit, spirit, you know what? Or uh, David said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Watch this, that, that, that part right there, if I focus, it can bring me down. But he said, but the Lord will deliver me out of them all. But what yeah, I don't want you to miss is me are the afflictions of the righteous. I come myself with that. When I'm going through a heavy period after getting done preaching, I get done preaching a sermon and the spirit of God takes me high and then all of a sudden I drop back down to earth and I get home and there's bills on the table, there's things that need to be repaired, there's problem with the children, there's stuff I gotta deal with with my mate, there's things all around me that says, what was all that preaching for? You feel drained. Anybody ever been there? You leave a worship and all of a sudden, boom, you hit this place. Or you have a victory. And boom, you hit this place. Where you have to tell yourself, or you have to battle yourself back up 
to a place of power. It's a daily battle. It's a real battle. God says in this battle, because it's so real, just so you know, I want you to hear it here. You heard of many famous, many pastors, pastors' relatives. I'm not even naming names tonight. Many people that committed suicide. You found many people that are dealing with real problems. PTSD, bipolar situations, anxiety, uncontrolled anxiety, all of that, you may, as your spirit is getting settled, because we're human, God gave men knowledge. He gave us knowledge. Why do you think uh, the Bible tells us to seek a counselor? I'm telling somebody out there, don't feel like it's wrong to get, uh, it's wrong for you to see a counselor or to get a therapist. God said that those things will bless you. We did a whole portion on mental health. I, look, I don't know about you, but I want to stay sane. So if I got to go see someone to talk me through this, it's a blessing. What the Bible is, is therapy itself. But you got to know, I may need to get some help. Because, look what the Bible tells us in case you're wondering, you know, I've seen some people who are so spiritual. God can handle it all. You don't need no counseling. No, you may need some counselor and some medicine. Don't fool yourself. Because the spiritual warfare you're dealing with is so strong that it has shattered your human spirit. And it needs to be built up again. I believe the Bible teaches that we are to seek help for mental illness. For any condition that attacks our mental health. Here's the kicker. The same way we go to the doctor for our physical health. You don't say anything. If you had a heart attack, sitting there on the table, you're going to let them bring you back if they can. Diabetes, you're going to go to die out. What am I telling you? I'm telling you, quit acting crazy when it comes to mental health. Your mental health is really something you need to make sure I... You know, I learned a long time ago, uh, and it was, I'm, I'm thank God for my wife and for some, some folk here at church who every now and then will tell me, Pastor, no, you can't do it all. Take a break. It has saved my mental health and my physical health. Believe you me. Look what the Bible says. I want you to write these down. Especially if you're one kind of people that say, well, we don't have to worry about that. Yes, you do. We all have to worry about battling discouragement. The National Institute of Mental Health reports that one in four adults suffer from a diagnostic mental disorder in any given year. It did say one in four unsaved. It said one in four adults. It didn't say one in four, you know, uh, that, that aren't Sunday school teachers, that aren't preachers, that aren't, you know, don't go to church, that aren't shouters. No, all of us have to. You know, a lot of times we, we, we've been fed this stuff in, in, in the kingdom of God right now where we're supposed to be able to just confess something and everything drops off. I don't see that in the Bible. I see a battle. I see God telling us, fight the good fight of faith. And that fight of faith, even it, it can happen when I got to lay hands on myself physically, but it can happen when I got to read word mentally. What am I telling somebody? Watch some instruction. So here you are going through something. Uh, you're sitting in a room full of people, but your mind is racing a thousand different ways. Get in your Bible. Find the scriptures that tell you God will give you peace. Seek some consistency so you can walk in the joy of God. If anybody is supposed to be quote unquote normal, it's supposed to be those of us who have our hand in God's hands. But it can only be when we have faced the fact that there's an area in my life that I need to get under control, and it's a constant attack in my mental health. It'll make you think crazy thoughts. It'll make you think about hurting yourself, and, you, and you're sitting there going, this ain't supposed to be happening. This ain't supposed to be happening. This ain't supposed to be happening. And you look around and see all the other Christians. I don't see it happening to them. That's because they're battling, and you're sitting there whining about it. I'm just telling you honestly. Don't fall, don't get down on yourself because you have to deal with a mental health issue just like you can't get down on yourself. Why does one person have sickle cell? Another person need dialysis if they got diabetes? Type one, type two. Why? It's because this is not our home. You're down here to serve God. And you're supposed to keep your body, your temple, in the best condition to serve him. 
And if that means I'm going to allow someone to speak into my life to get me out of this depressed condition, then that's what you do. Here are some of the things that can cause, which lets you know is universal. Financial pressure. Relationship pressure. Low self-esteem. Almost any pressure can trigger a mental disorder um, if the person isn't able to process the situation without some help. I'm not getting into all the physiological parts, but I will tell you drug addiction a lot of times comes from an attempt to self-medicate. Uh, emotional and behavioral problems, sometimes the anger, the uncontrollable anger, uh, the, the way we you know, get down on other folk is because we're really trying to lift ourselves out of a position of being hurt. When the reality is sometimes we never know we have a dark side because that disorder has pushed something out of us. We don't even act like ourselves anymore. And it's because you're hurting. You heard the saying, hurting people hurt people. It's because if hurting people don't try to get some help for their hurt. I remember we were doing uh, the blood pressures, you know, at the church and uh, a gentleman's pressure was high and he just said to me, Pastor, I don't need nothing. I'm good. I'm reading my scripture in the morning. I said, well, th that's cool, but have you been reading your scripture? Yes. Well, go get you some blood pressure medicine. We sometimes forget we're no good to God if we are all shattered and messed up, right? We can become very unstable, irrational, and psychotic. That's why we need some help. This means, watch this, our faith and trust is always in God. I will never deny, that's always first. But we utilize the wisdom and the knowledge he has given us that he has placed in other men and women who can bless us. We need to seek medical help because, look at the word of God says, Proverbs eleven fourteen, where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. When you're sitting there trying to handle something yourself, you can fall or fail. But in a multitude of counselors, when you go and try to at least talk it over with somebody. You know, I, I was talking over a situation with someone and I found out as we were talking through it, and, and I wasn't being totally honest like it was me going through it. I was just talking. We got in a group and I found out other people were going through the same thing. You know what it did for me? It made me more, uh, it, made, it gave me a better handle on how to get through what I was going through because I thought about if God is allowing them to make it, I, I got away from the area, oh, this must be strange, something wrong with me. No, because of sin, something is wrong with all of us. So what I had to do was I, I quit rationalized that, you know, I'm this super Christian, I'm stronger than everybody else, and I got some word and I got some help. I faced it. Half of your battle is facing when something is wrong. And when you face when something is wrong, that's when you get your blessing. I remember we had a washing machine that broke down uh, a couple years ago. And, or it might have been a dryer. I can't remember which one it was. And we had to order a dryer. We had to wait. So in between, we had to go to the laundromat. But what I remember is, watch this, there were a few times when the dryer acted up. So, you know, I did my mechanical best, you know, to kick it and shake it. And you do all this stuff to it, and then boom, it works. So you think everything good, you keep walking away from it, and then all of a sudden, it acts up again. <laughs> and you sit around, and you say, wait a minute, and it stops again. Then ultimately, one of those times, it just stopped. Here's the problem. That's why we had to wait and go to the laundromat, because we, if we would have said, dryers aren't supposed to just stop. Something must be wrong with my dryer. We'll ignore it. We ignored it until we had to wait and do some other things when we could have had a new dryer sitting there. Same thing with your car. Light comes on, you ignore it, or it's time for oil change, then it breaks down. The car. What I'm saying is a car and a dryer are not your bodies. 
when you see the signal is something's wrong and you know that you're in a spiritual battle, then at least you will start attacking what's wrong. And so the first thing God says, you can go to a point that you may need some. God, God asks us to seek some help. Proverbs 24 and 6. For you should wage war. I love this. With sound guidance. You can be fighting the war wrong. You can be looking for peace the wrong way. And all of a sudden, there's a brother or sister who is a trained counselor who can say, no, this is what you should do. And bring you back to a place where you can get a healing. Because you trusted them. Comes with many, many counselors. Proverbs 20, 18. Plans are confirmed by getting advice. And with guidance, one wages war. I love the references to war because what I'm telling you is this is a battle that we all have to battle, right? I hope you're getting something out of this. Watch this because there's somebody out there right now, the devil's trying to destroy you. Why? Most people can feel sad or depressed at times. It's a normal reaction to losses in life or challenges or changes. It's a normal reaction. But when intense sadness, including feelings of helpless, hopeless, worthless, lasts for many days, many weeks, and keeps you from living your life, it's time to get some help. Someone asked me one time, said, Pastor, you know, when you preach, you just stand up and preach to us. Why Bible study do you, you know, go through? I go through this because I believe in a Bible study. I want you to have a chance to write some notes visually. I, I try to cover all the areas of learning. You know, you may be eclectic where you are a visual learner or, you know, you're an audible learner, whatever it is. I want you to see, because as I'm going through this study, I put some time into it, even when I'm preaching, you know, I'm going down to preaching text, but when we're doing Bible study, I want to slow it down just enough so you can understand what God is saying. Hear this. When it's intense and it's happening constantly, it's not normal. It's not right. Don't wait till something breaks down. Get you some help. It may be something more than sadness. You could have clinical depression, a treatable medical condition. Now, I'm going to get off of that. You got it. But now I'm going to go into you that I know people who go to medical doctors, who go for counseling. That is not your source. That's your help. Your source is the word of God. But it's the word of God also that tells us to get some help. But I got to know my total faith and trust is in God totally. No matter if it's clinical depression, I don't know what it is. God is the one who can fix it. But if I know what it is, if I, if I go get some help, I have something that I can then pray on and pray for and battle. So what is discouragement? We're looking for a basic definition. It is found in the word itself. Discouraged, indicating the opposite of or the absence of courage, meaning that it, it makes you draw back from something in life. It makes you, uh, you know, you can't sleep. Um, you're, you're sitting there facing insomnia and you try to read the words, but you're reading without admitting. I'm reading this text because something's wrong and I need some help. So discouraged means that it pulls you to a place where you can't fight any longer. God said, no, don't allow yourself to get discouraged. Maintain enough courage to keep battling. Oh, I got a word for somebody out there tonight. Keep battling. The victory is yours, but you got to keep on battling. The one who feels this way is less confident, less hopeful, persuaded not to act, stops you from doing certain things in life, prevented from action, by obstacles or spiritual warfare. Okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty. I could have started with spiritual warfare, but some of you would have took that and said, see, I know it was just them demons. No, it's a holistic battle, but we need to understand this basic biblical truth. All mental stress and emotional attacks are spiritual in nature, and therefore, here's the battle, Spiritual warfare is inevitably, it is a battle, it's inevitable. It is a battle for our very existence and we must fight. I don't care what it is, the true nature of victory comes from understanding what we're wrestling with. 
We're wrestling against principalities and power. We're wrestling against the weaknesses in our physical state. We're wrestling against our flesh and all those other things we know that try to put us into a position of discouragement and depression. Ephesians 6, for we struggle. There it is again, the word battle. Is our that is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. So it is spiritual in nature, even when it's someone not saved because of the nature of the makeup God made us. Hope you understand that, that the battle you're fighting, these things we're talking about, it's not like the doctor, you know, putting his hand on what's going on. It's in the middle realm. So that spiritual realm takes words from counselors. Well, what greater word is it than God's word to bring you back? And you know it yourself. You've been in a situation where everything was going wrong and that word of God set you back to a place of calmness. A word will calm the spirit within us and bring us to a place of blessing. As you can see, we are spirit, soul, and body. Look at this. Here, here's our makeup. Why it's so important that we understand how the enemy attacks us through our mind. Because, first of all, the spirit in the Hebrew is the word rock. In Greek, it's the word pneuma. The rake and the pneuma. This is the immaterial part of a man that relates to God. So when you worship God and when your spirit is lightened, it is that supernatural part of us, that uh, essence of us that will last throughout eternity when the flesh is gone. It is that spiritual part of us that is the candle of the Lord. It is the part of us we are spirit. Uh, that, that's the essence of us, the real us, the soul, our mind area, and we're in this body and this flesh and our soul will kind of gang up on us and we won't be able to fight the battles we need to fight. So you need to understand that you got to get your spirit back in control. That's how you do it through the word of God. We are soul. Right? And so that when we talk about psychological or psychologists, it's like the Greek word is our psyche. That's, that's the mind part of us. This is the seat of our intelligence, the place where our thoughts, emotions, and desires. So what happens when we're fighting a spiritual battle is they get all out of control. And we can't handle it. And then finally, the body. That's the soma, the flesh, the physical realm. That's the karma. Everybody say karma. Karma. That's the part of us that's, that's stuck to this world. That's the part of us that the devil, uh, that the flesh is always trying to be in control and bring us back in the subjection of carnal weakness. And all those biblical characters that I showed you that fell, it's because their flesh took over. They, their soul and their mind was overrun with the wrong thoughts and the wrong beliefs and the wrong pressure. And then their spirit got disconnected from the source of its strength. And then all of a sudden the flesh was walking around like a zombie and you're saved. But the problem is you got to understand what are some of the experiences and conditions in our lives that precipitate discouragement? We're going to look at, starting next week, come on, this is a good study. I'm sorry I had to lay such groundwork, but you ought to tell somebody who you know. During this pandemic, we got to make sure we get this battle right. So I know what's, you know, I'm not walking around without knowing what I'm fighting. So I'm not sitting there, you know, wondering what's going on. No, there's an attack going on. There's a battle going on. We're going to look at some of the causes and we'll look at biblical characters who fought through each one of those causes and won. Hallelujah. We're going to look at how the word of God puts us in a position that we get victory out of our battles. And so the first one we'll pick up next week, fatigue from overwork and or stress and a depletion of emotional energy. Who's the Bible character? I'll tell you next week. That's where I want to leave you at, a little cliffhanger. This is Pastor Duncan saying that I never stand up here and try to act like you're trying to tell you you're going through something that I'm not. And if I'm not going through it, it's because I've addressed it with the word of God. But just because I've addressed it with the word of God doesn't mean I still don't battle every day. That's what I need you to see. I want to pray a prayer for you tonight. I want you to battle through your discouragement. I want you to battle through your depression. I don't want you to get fearful about any of this. I want you to understand that totally 
God can put you back in your right mind and bring you back to a place of victory. Heavenly Father, right now, my brother and sister who's watching this, maybe when the lights go out, fear comes. Maybe they can't get through a day without anxiety. Maybe they can't get to a place of, of where they got total peace without their thoughts running in different directions. God, I ask you supernaturally to bring them back to a place that they get back in your word and they allow that word to come into their heart and deliver them. A word in due time, how sweet it is. Your word is powerful. It, it, uh, the psalmist said it is sweeter than honey in the honeycomb able to divide between the soul and spirit, the bone and the marrow. The word of God can put me back together again. I thank you as I pray for my brother and sister. Let them look up saying, I know what it is, and I'm getting ready to battle until I get victory. This is Pastor Duncan saying, God bless you. Um, please tune back in. Um, we always tell you, go and like, follow. Um, we're trying to and, and tell someone else about the ministry. But this series, I believe, is very important during this time of pandemic. How to battle through discouragement and depression. God bless you. See you next week.